Blockchain Monster Hunt is one of my favorite new games. It's a completely novel concept. It runs entirely on the blockchain, which is extremely rare. Their token is natively on Ethereum, BSC, and Polygon, and they're developing their own EVN chain on top of that. They recently finished their highly successful Genesis NFT sale that I completely missed because you know, we all miss 95% of the things going on in crypto, even if we're paying close attention. But I've been talking with the team on and off for a while now, and they really know what they're doing, especially with the Chain Guardians team working with them. But I'm getting ahead of myself. In this video, we'll cover what Blockchain Monster Hunt is, the different monsters, how the tokenomics work, the team, and then what's in store going forward. Welcome to DeFi Now, I'm Josh Cross, and if you like high quality ad-free crypto content, make sure to subscribe down there with the bell notification as we often have time sensitive content and giveaways that you don't want to miss. Now, as always, my videos are not financial advice or endorsements. You've got to make your own investing decisions based on your own situation. This video is purely informative and should only be one piece of your own research. Again, I'm not your financial advisor. Do your own damn independent research. Now let's get into it. Blockchain Monster Hunt or BCMH is a game inspired by Pokemon Go where you catch monsters and battle them to earn tokens. It's still pretty basic, but they've got a lot in store, including a full metaverse that you'll explore with up to six monsters and items along the way, but we'll talk about that later. For now, they have the blockchain timeline in which new things will happen with each new block. There will be catch blocks and battle blocks, which are random depending on the hash of the block in the actual blockchain. In catch blocks, you can try to catch that monster and pay more BCMC to increase the chance of catching it. In battle blocks, you can choose one of your own monsters to go up against that monster that pops up. And when you start a battle, you choose one of your monsters to go against the one in the block and you sign a transaction. Then the battle goes on in the background for now, although you can view a replay of it afterwards, like this one that's sped up for the sake of timing. But in the future, these will be more interactive. There are 10 different element types for the monsters. Earth, electric, water, fire, ice, wind, dark, light, spirit, and neutral. When preparing for a battle, you'll need to know what their different weaknesses or resistances are to be effective. Or you can just do what I do and keep this cheat sheet up on another screen. Since it's just in beta now, there are only catch blocks and battle blocks. But once it goes live on mainnet, there will also be commercial blocks, which distribute rewards to players and cooldown blocks, which have no actions. The purpose of the cooldown blocks is to balance the minting rates on the different chains. Since BSC is faster than ETH, BSC will have more cooldown blocks, otherwise the BSC chain would just become more populated more, much more quickly. The rate at which catch blocks are created is determined by the number of monsters in circulation and the growth of the game. If lots of monsters are caught, then catch blocks will become less frequent. The difficulty is calculated in a similar way to Bitcoin's difficulty. So when new monsters are minted in a catch block, it increases the overall population. When you lose a battle, there's a chance your monster will be killed, and that means that that NFT is burnt. So in the beginning, it'll be easy to catch monsters and win battles, but as the number of monsters grows, it'll become more difficult to do so, and that's to prevent overpopulation. And that, and that population control is also great for secondary sales because it creates more scarcity. The kill rate shows up as a percentage when you go to battle so you can see what it is and you can buy insurance or an extra life to prevent this if you'd like. If you have a weaker monster going against a more powerful monster, it'll have a higher chance of dying. So, you know, kind of makes sense. There's a lot more to it, but I'll cover it in future videos. For now, let's move on to the monsters themselves. To understand the monsters in BCMH, we have to first understand how the generations work. There are Genesis monsters, which are the ancestors of all the other monsters. Then those are bred in the wild or in the lab to create subsequent generations. When you breed them in the lab, the goal is to continually evolve stronger monsters with better and better attributes for battle. Each monster has their own lore, which I'm definitely not making up right now. For example, legend has it, Poink once ate the grandmother of a little girl with a red hood. Piney and Pioneer are the great grandkids of Sonic the Hedgehog. Poco never got over the ending of Game of Thrones, so that's why his face is frozen in anger and disbelief, like all of us. Mofu was bred among several grumpy cats, and she will mofuk you up. Hog V likes to get high on truffles, as you can tell. Sidious has feet made of rocket boosters. Haley and Bark once got together and created the greatest horror movie franchise of all time. 
True story. Dobu is a reincarnated scholar with his head literally in the clouds. Lamo uses her cuteness to hide the fact that she dreams of being a serial killer. Just look at her eyes. And Chilby, Chilby's cool. There are almost 500 different monsters, and each one has a level between 1 and 100, plus a perfection rate, which affects their stats on a more smaller scale. Each monster has the DNA of the block it was born in, so that one is completely unique. The game is currently in open beta, so you can play it on the Rinkaby testnet, but it'll be playable on Ethereum, BSC, and Polygon once it goes live. There's a link to their tutorial below if you want to check it out, but for now, let's move on to the tokenomics. The blockchain monster coin is the utility and governance token of the game, and it's widely used throughout it. You need a small amount to catch or battle, and you'll earn some from battling as well. The BCMC token has only been out for about a month, but they already have a native bridge to Ethereum, BSC, and Polygon. Importantly, this bridge isn't like other bridges, which holds the native tokens on one chain and then mints wrapped tokens on the other chain. The BCMC tokens are native on those three chains, and when you transfer them, they're burned on the original chain and natively minted on the new chain. It's hard to overstate how awesome that is from a security standpoint, because then your tokens are in your wallet and not sitting in a smart contract. And they're adding the same feature for the NFTs as well. So this is really cool. Now being a DeFi channel, I have to also mention their flash loan feature. This is an awesome idea. You can put your monsters in a flash loan pool and then other players can borrow them and use them in battle. So if a nice battle block opens up and you don't have a monster for it, just borrow one from the pool, use it in battle, and then return it to the pool all in one transaction. And then you share the earnings with the owner of the monster. Super cool idea. I can't wait to see this implemented. Now here is the distribution of the BCMC token. The total supply is 1 billion across all chains combined, which is why they must be burned on one chain to be minted on the other. 40% is for the mining rewards, 0.5% is for the public round, 9.8% for the private rounds, 17.6% for the ecosystem and treasury, 14.1% for marketing and partnerships, and 18% for team and advisors. And here's the unlock schedule. You can see it will take 12 years for all 1 billion tokens to be in circulation. And if you'd like to look at this more in detail, you can find it in their Git book, which is linked in the description. Now, as far as the team goes, one of their co-founders was a tech lead at Facebook, and the other was a senior engineer at Google. Combine that with the experience from the Chain Guardians team, and then being incubated by Chain Boost, you've got a pretty strong recipe for success. I've been in direct contact with the team, and they are receptive of feedback from both myself and the community, which is great to see, and it gives me a lot of confidence in the long-term success of the project. Now, I've already played the game quite a bit on Testnet, and even without earning actual money, it can be pretty addicting collecting monsters and battling them. So I'm excited to see how it goes once it's live on mainnet, and especially when the metaverse opens up. I do own some BCMC tokens, so I'm definitely biased here, but I also own them because I'm bullish on the project. So take that however you like, just don't take it as financial advice. But what do you think? Have you played the game on Testnet yet? And if you have, what do you think of it? Did you participate in the Genesis NFT sale and get yourself some early NFTs? If so, I might have to buy some from you because I totally missed it. Anyway, sound off your thoughts in the comments below. And if you made it this far and think you got some value from watching, a thumbs up down there is always helpful and I appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching and keep exploring.